Those void well can make short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? It seems someone, something, wanted me alive. I thought the Order would get rid of any trace of the old source key. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to dwarves. The child considers your statement. If you're just a person, you're one of the smallest I've ever seen. Little people, like me, you mean, I guess. He pauses. Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid. Searching your face, he lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any source on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're right. At least they don't mind where anyone goes. They know we can't leave the island, and it's a lot nicer out here than inside. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they made it to shore. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood-red colour. Never before have you seen a lizard such as this. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smouldering embers that sizzle your very soul. Pleased to make my acquaintance, are you? I see your short-term memory fails you where mine does not. Why, only a few hours ago, I saw you skulk about that ship like a lost child in search of its mother. But you weren't a lost child, were you? You weren't an innocent at all. Word has reached me, you see, through a very sour grapevine indeed, that you turned your back on your fellow passengers, left us to fend for ourselves. So much easier, isn't it, to look out for oneself alone? Sorry is a word for the weak. Stand by your actions. They were actually entirely justified as far as I'm concerned. Besides, I wasn't fishing for an apology. I was merely making a point. About oneself. Alone. So, if there's nothing further... 
I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but I had thought it quite self-evident I was gazing out over the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories. Quite so. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Oh, may the Seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry, for the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly, a kind offer indeed. Even if it comes from the very person that left me and others to rot on a sinking ship. You do look able, though. Despite your selfish tendencies, Tendencies to which I'm no stranger, truth be told. Fine, I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. You do tend to beat around the bush, don't you? Oh, well, that wishy-washy answer will have to do then. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out it goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic and, yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards, then, to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off! Famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War, I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next Emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. But I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne.
A black cat. A herald of wisdom in my homeland. How fortuitous. What's this? I found something. I don't have the right tool for digging. One must put in due effort if one is to reap the proper reward. This leads. You walk up to a skeleton unlike any you have ever seen before. His skull seems to be carved into intricate patterns with a gemstone sitting in the middle of his forehead. Approaching, you hear a profane rumble from the undead beast. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Perhaps? Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation. That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Actually, you don't seem half as threatening as those creatures in red. Run along, won't you? I have business to attend to. Why, its face, of course. What other use would I have for some rotting corpse? A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately but viciously rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone, but as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Because my own was stolen from me! And the idea of being chased across Rivalon by every idiot with a torch does not appeal! Oh, get away! Monster, hide the children! Oh. You are simple beasts, and you simply do not like my... Well, not my kind, but those that look like me. So, if I am to traverse this land, I will need a mask to disguise my features. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I have important things to do on Reaper's Coast. I cannot simply sit about waiting for the rest of you to die so I may continue my business in peace. No, I may be an Eternal, but my patience has its limits. Indeed, I may be the only Eternal. My people seem rather... absent. At least from this realm. As for the others... well... There is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. A cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. We were all one. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I fear the limits of your imagination would not do us justice. We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have our world again. Well, that hardly seems relevant. But if you must know, I was... inconvenienced for a time. Several centuries, in fact. Or perhaps millennia. One tends to lose track. 
I was sealed in a tomb for daring to be curious about the world. It seems our king did not agree that the universe should be explored to its full potential. Perhaps I should thank him. It seems I was spared whatever happened to the others. I wonder if flowers would be appropriate. Ah, well, that is the curious thing. They are clearly absent from this world, and yet they are everywhere. Every one of your races resembles them in some manner, and the statues you have built to your gods look remarkably familiar. Perhaps my people have ascended to some new realm, or perhaps your gods are merely a folk memory. Regardless, they are not here, but I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. A companion? After you left the others to die on that ship? Hardly actions that instill confidence. Then again, I am somewhat isolated here. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality, but being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off.